Vikings and Shield Maidens. I'm going to talk to you today. Some observations. So, here's some observations, and I will tell you a story. When I was a young apprentice, I was traveling with a service crew foreman late at night, and what service crews do is we would restore electricity generally, the first to be called in a power outage, and we would patrol lines, see what was wrong, and either fix it or hand it off to other crews. And this was an old foreman, um, good foreman, and we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have any of those things. We were having a discussion, and uh, we're teasing back and forth. Both of us are married, and uh, I don't know how we got onto it, but we talked about uh, how <laughs> he was a big proponent of happy wife, happy life syndrome. It had just become popular in the previous 10 years. It was kind of a twist on an old saying, which was, you know, select a good wife and have a great life. Unfortunately, it started out as a joke and the church really adopted it because it's very, it fits uh, the gynocentric social order very, very well. And it suits a lot of uh, ladies needs, shall we say, which is the happy wife, happy life. Uh, saying, which really wasn't the original uh, content that was being broadcast in the 70s when I grew up as a Christian. I am not a Christian. I have uh, abandoned that faith, and there's good reasons. I'll tell you someday. Uh, I still believe in God, but uh, it is not in that form at all. So there's a lot of truth and wisdom to be learned, though. It's mostly the organized direction in which uh, Christianity has gone and the uh, just the high and mighty portion of it and the vitriol. You think that the left throws a lot of vitriol out there and hatred? It is unmatched by the conservative Christian side of the house. <laughs> they just use it against each other. It's the same, same tools, uh, just different hands. So, so we're back to him and his happy wife, happy life. And I'm a proponent of select a good wife, have a great life. And in the conversation, he says, no, I can prove it. I absolutely can prove it to you. It is good. You know, it is, it is happy wife, happy life. And I'm like, oh, how on earth are you going to prove it to me? He goes, the brownie point system. And I'm looking at him and go, Mike. What the hell is a brownie point system? And he goes, oh, good Lord, you have to know the brownie point system. Thor, where have you been? I'm sure your mother has taught you the brownie point system. I said, brownie nose system? He goes, no, not the brown nose system. It's a different system. I go, all right, all right. This is the brownie point system. I go, okay. But where the hell does that come from? Well, I guess it came from these kind of Girl Scout rankings where they started out, they were called brownies, I guess. I have no idea. But they get earned points for doing certain favors, right? So what he was describing to me was basically his wife would give him a honeydew list and all wives would give you a honeydew list and you would earn a brownie point. Yeah. So if you took out the trash, you could get a brownie point. Or if you were a good boy and she was happy with you, you'd get a brownie point. And you could get a hundred brownie points and you get some kind of reward. Now, being a conservative Christian, he wouldn't tell me what that reward was, but wink, wink, it was a good reward. But, the, but there was a problem with the brownie point system, and this was his proof. He goes, the reason I can prove that it's happy wife, happy life is that you can have a hundred brownie points all stored up, ready to go. And you have one aw shit and it wipes out all the brownie points and you got to start all over again. And I'm just looking at him going, you're telling me that this is a scorekeeping system between men and women that there is keeping track of scoring? He goes, of course, it's always been that way. It's that way with your mother. It's that way with all of the women. You got to keep score. They're keeping score. So you better keep score too. And you better not fuck up. That was his message to me as a young apprentice. And I just listened to it and went, okay, well, thanks, Mike. Appreciate the info. 
So here we are. I don't know, some 35 years later. What a crock of shit. But a lot of people absolutely live by that. And I could tell you this from being married for a very long time and interacting with very many women in several relationships. Women are taught to keep score. However, this leads to really bad relationships and a lot of bitterness, a lot of resentment. I'm not sure exactly where it comes from other than a woman's need for provisioning and security. And by God, you better stay on top of it or you're failing your burden of performance. Um, but I, I noticed that the beautiful women that had that desire for me and really had that attraction and burning desire had no scoring system whatsoever. And I would encourage both men and women to drop any scoring system that you have. If, of course, all relationships are some form of value exchange. They are. But I am telling you, even though it is a value exchange situation, you should not keep score. Now, there are boundaries and lines that should not be crossed. Those have consequences. Not petty little things. Suck it up. There is no score. You know, and with the, with the women that I've had the best relationships with, even the ones where it led to an eventual split, didn't keep score, and that was not used against me or vice versa. Women will dredge up stuff from your past and say, you did this, you did that, solo guys. But just to justify, you know, whatever dastardly deeds that's been done. But this score system where you do this for me, so much of this, and I'll do that, you got to kind of drop that, especially when it comes to the relationship being a good one and effortless. If you're keeping score, that is not effortless. Uh, ladies, if you're keeping score, that's not effortless. You should have enough desire for your man that him just being himself and doing what he does and the mystery that surrounds his masculinity when he is on top of it should be more than enough to just have you so desirous and pleased at his presence. This is actually a reality. Uh, I've seen so many times women that are in such long-term relationships, they, they give, they give, they give, they give. And I've spoken with more than a few because they're so puzzled when they run into another housewife that's like, I do everything and he does nothing. And, and they just seem so confused. And I finally put it together that women that aren't really seeing their man as their absolute best option, the leader of the pack, they start to build up these resentments as if somebody is keeping score. And the ones that are happy as clams, they don't keep score at all. They're just happy to be there. And just the mere fact that it exists is enough. And it strikes deep into their heart. And they understand that what they do by giving gives them more from the man. Let me just boil it into simple terms. The women that give the most to their men get the most in return. So don't keep score. You hear me, shield maidens and Vikings? It's Thor. Swing my hammer. Until next time, skull.